Thank you. I would like first to pay tribute to the women in Camp Liberty. I think we cannot begin any sentence here today at the eve of the Women's Day without having them in mind. But I am also here and I came here because I wanted to protest more than celebrate. I, I come with a contrite heart and, and it's difficult for me to think what I could celebrate in the Women's Day tomorrow. But I want to protest. I want to protest first because I have seen in all the news of all the world the images of Islamic fanatics destroying the art, the ancient cities of Nimrud and of Mesopotamia. I have heard the UNESCO protesting and declaring that this is a war crime. But I have seen nowhere the images that I have seen in YouTube of women sold in cages in the market of Mosul. During this year, we have had so many celebrations, dark celebrations, acknowledging the horrors of the past. The last one yesterday, I think, was the March of Selma, where the black American people marched demanding their rights, their equality in America. President Obama was there. But why don't we talk about the apartheid against women? It's not an apartheid because of race or because of religion or because of nationality. It's a worst apartheid. It's an apartheid inside the families. Why in the West, in the free world, there's nothing about that apartheid? Why is it just swept like if it was a comma in a sentence? I am protesting then for the silence of the free world and of the leaders of the free world. I am appalled. to see that in these times of darkness, we don't have leaders of light. Well, you see, the only person that I have seen talking about the imperative of having sanctions against Iran, because it works, because it's the only thing that they understand, has been Madame Rajavi. She has been the one pointing out that because there is this leverage, we shouldn't be seeking in losing that leverage. Curiously, the other one that have been understanding this equation are the Saudis, who are pouring oil in the market in order to have the prices of the oil come down in order to have the budget of Iran with less money. Isn't that obvious? Well, I think that sometimes the obvious things seem to be like not obvious for the people who should take the decisions. That's why if there is something that I want to celebrate today is what you here are doing. Because this rally, this meeting, under the leadership of Madame Rajavi, is not for us. We know who we are, we know how many we are, and we know how devoted we are to this cause. But this is what the Ayatollahs are watching. And we here are becoming the watchdogs of Iran. 
So this makes a difference. Saying, denouncing, pointing out fingers makes a difference. And I would like to finish by saying that it's because we need you. We need you. You who are here, we need you, not only for Iran, not only for saving the lives of our sisters and brothers in Camp Liberty, but we need you for the world. I was reminded I was reminded that in the Iranian constitution, the idea of a universal caliphate, Mr. Alejo Vargas remind me, is already there. It's not even an idea of ISIS. It has been the product of the insanity of the Ayatollahs. So you are important not only for your country, Iran, not only for the people of Ashraf, but for all of us, because the Ayatollahs want to have a universal caliphate. It's an imperialism of extremism, and that's what we're fighting against. But I have good news. I'm a believer, a very strong believer, and in the scriptures it is said that when God wants to defeat his enemies, he turns them mad. That's what's happening in Iran. They're mad.